Good morning, all of you. Welcome back to our online class. Last one week, we have uh, done electrostatics with the uh, detailings of uh, the theory and as well as few models. One more time, I remind you: good number of assignments are shared, and you have to go through all of them because there are range of examples for you. Sufficient, more than sufficient for your CET and NEET exams. If not for JE, for CET and NEET, more than sufficient models you can see in those assignments. This class, a first day with a first topic, current electricity. Generally, a least scoring uh, uh, unit uh, in NEET or CET for students it does not mean that it is any double topic. A very simple topic for CET and NEET examinations. Today, let us brush up some of the key points. And again, telling you, remember these key uh, factors and the key definitions and units. Easy scoring you will find in your CET. Now, current electricity. To be even before we start with the definition of current, first let us see what are the conditions for current. First one is availability of charge carriers. The first condition to constitute electric current is availability of charge carriers. What do we mean by charge carriers? They have the free charges which can move under the influence of external electric field. In such cases, we have again two to three different cases. In some conductors which we call OB conductors, only the negatively charged free electrons are the charge carriers. Like metals. The only conductors, the only charge carriers are negatively charged free electrons. Whereas, in the case of non-ohmic conductors such as liquid electrolytes or semiconductors, in these cases we have both the types of charge carriers. In the case of semiconductors, it is negatively charged free electrons besides positively charged holes. Charge is same for both electron and hole. Similarly, in the case of electrolyte also, it is the flow of both positive ions and negative ions that gives rise to electric current. So, availability of free charge carriers is the first requirement and the second requirement is for the charges to flow, there should be a potential difference that is to be created. In such case, you remember, negative charges always tend to flow from high, lower potential to higher potential. Rather, uh, in fact, uh, positive charges from higher potential to lower potential. Now here when we are defining current, there are two currents that we define. Be to begin with or to use, we always define what is called as conventional current. That is the current due to the flow of positive charges. In fact, in all the ohmic conductors that we talk about, the electric current is only due to the electrons which is the real current. So we never speak about real current in our discussions, we always represent the conventional current in our representations. Now conventional current means always from higher potential to lower potential a current due to positive charges. Now here, now let me come to the definition of uh, current and here starts your examples as well. We are now giving three expressions for current, three types of models we will find. The first one is the steady current steady current which we common very popularly called as dc the direct current what is meant by that no changes either in magnitude or directions then it is said to be the steady current is same at all times in both magnitude and direction this is how we define i is q by d if q is the quantity of charge that flows through a given cross section in d seconds that is what is current i is equal to q by t which we call rate of flow of charges. Now Q, quantization, any rule you remember, the N for number of charge carriers which are crossing a given cross section per unit time that I have taken N by T. So this is N by T, the rate of flow, E means the charge of the electron. This expression holds good for the ohmic conductors because I earlier told ohmic conductors the only charge carriers are the negatively charged free electrons here. So this is N by T into E. 
Look at this expression. LHS is current, RHS is rate of flow. E is a universal constant. 1.6 into 10 by is minus 19. Wherever you get that number 1 by E, take it as 6.25 into 10 by 18. Now this is for ohmic conductor, this expression you will use. And as we have told in the case of a non ohmic conductor such as semiconductors, we have both electrons and as well as holes. And that is why the expression with the small change you will find here, I is rate of flow of electrons plus rate of flow of holes. So both the things are added. Remember, hole and the electron current will be in same direction. In fact, they will be moving in opposite direction, but the current direction is same. And hence, we are writing it as n by t, rate of flow of electrons plus rate of flow of holes times e, which is nothing but the charge of electron as well as hole. So this is for semiconductor. One more important thing you will remember. For semiconductor. So this is about our steady current. Now we come to this variable current. The current which varies in magnitude, maybe also in direction. But here we are now writing only for the magnitudes. So the variable current, what is what is the variable current? There the rate of flow is not a constant. Here the rate of flow is constant. In such variable cases, we always calculate what is called as instantaneous current. I is dq by dt. This is the instantaneous current which arises in the case of variable current. We will show some simple examples in the uh, latter course how we are taking this derivative and calculating the instantaneous currents. And of, of course, not necessary to mention the units and all, it's a very SI unit is ampere and it is a scalar quantity. Current has magnitude and direction. Conventional current always from higher potential to lower potential. There is a direction sense, but it's a scalar because we know that the possessing direction alone is not a requirement for a physical quantity to be a vector. Rather, it should also obey a special loss of friction such as triangular law, parallelogram law, electric current it does not satisfy that. Therefore, current is a scalar quantity. Now, one more definition, another very important aspect for your CET or mean exam is orbital current. In the case of uh, steady current or variable current, what we have considered is stream of charge carriers, large number of charge carriers flowing through a conductor under a potential difference, right? But here, in the case of orbital current, there are no stream of charge carriers. There is only one, one and only one charge. See, here I have shown that a charge particle, mass m, if I am using any of the terms, Regular meaning, Q is the charge of the particle and now it is replacing a circular path of radius R with the frequency of revolution, small f, number of revolutions per second and the time for one revolution in time period capital T, V is the orbital velocity. So with such data, now I am defining what is called as orbital current. Remember, it is not the stream of charges, one and only charge tracing or orbiting in a circular path, then the path as a whole acts as a current loop whose current is given by I, the orbital current is the charge of the particle upon the time period of revolution. This 1 by T term, of course the frequency and that is why I have taken as charge times frequency will give you orbital current. And since I have also given a parameter such as uh, orbital velocity, I am just relating that the popular uh, results that uh, we have learned in our first view. The frequency 2 pi f is equal to omega and omega is nothing but v by r. v happens to be the linear velocity which we are calling as orbital velocity. Have these substitutions and the answer is i is charge times frequency r q v by 4 pi r is the expression. So remember, any expression I have given in, to, in terms of frequency or velocity. Supposing the expression you got it in terms of angular momentum, then it will be a simple changes that you have to do. Look here, I have said I is equal to QV by 2 pi r. Let me convert this into angular momentum L is equal to MVR. Therefore, supposing if I am using here mv, then it becomes mv square. 
So then the new expression, this young we are and regular as angular momentum like that. Or even it can be the case of, it can be the case of centripetal force also like that. Any expression, whenever expression, one expression is given, it should be the ability of the student to rewrite it into other two, three forms, then it does not become memory. Otherwise, if I tell you on the board, it simply becomes a memory and definitely at the time of examination, it's a element of stress. So always minimize your memory. Remember what was our mantra in the classroom? Less memory, more logic we require, we require for physics classes. So this is what is I correct, this is about currents. Steady currents, that to omic and now the conductors, variable current that is instantaneous current and now also the orbital current. Now, immediately we continue with the, the most popular topic in current density, what is that? Ohm's law. What is the Ohm's law? Now, we have a conductor, supposing I have shown you conductor as a straight conductor, the ends A and B, or let me take P and Q, or the ends are potentials Vp and Vq. Suppose Vp greater than Vq. Then earlier, as we have told, a conventional current is from higher potential to lower potential. Now you will see a current from end P to end P. That is what is taken as I. And this Vp minus Vq, Vp minus Vq, the potential difference I am writing it as V the old is. Now what is the popular Ohm's law? The current through a conductor is proportional to PD across the ends, across its ends. Remember there is a condition that at a constant temperature is the most important condition. Why that condition of temperature? We will discuss in the latter course. So the current through a conductor is proportional to voltage, the PD across its ends. Remember, this proportionality is what is Ohm's law. When we are writing it as constant removed and uh, proportionality removed by introducing a constant that is 1 by R, this expression is not Ohm's law, remember. This is only definition of resistance. Ohm's law is only this proportionality. Why? We discuss in the due course. So now here I am writing I equal to 1 by R times V or resistance SI unipole per amp that is ohm. This 1 by R is what is? Conductance. The SI unit is, since it is a reciprocal of resistance, you write it as ohm inverse, mo or it is popularly called as semen. I have been only the SI unit and as a homework or as a part of the program that you are following, you should also write the dimension formula for each and every term. Now let us see the results of uh, this Ohm's law. Now earlier we have told I proposed to be is Ohm's law. Now what are ohmic and non-ohmic conductors with examples? Ohmic conductor, ohmic conductor which obeys Ohm's law, which obeys Ohm's law does not mean that it obeys I is equal to V by R. No, it obeys only I proposed to be that is what is the linearity. That is, if we draw a graph between voltage versus current. Here I have taken voltage axis as x axis and current axis as y axis, but it can be vice versa also. But whatever it is, it is a straight line passing through origin. Remember here, straight line passing through origin. All such conductors are called as ohmic conductors, and the best examples are metals. Metals are ohmic conductors. So ohmic conductors, only charge carriers, free electrons, earlier we have done the statement and this is what is ohmic statement and now let us come to non-ohmic statement. Remember non-ohmic statement Ohm's law does not obey, yes, but we can use V is equal to IR. V is equal to IR can be used for even the so-called non-ohmic conductors because V is equal to IR does not represent Ohm's law. Then what is meant by non-obeying Ohm's law? It means that V could IR is applicable. Now here you can see the graph of voltage versus current is a non-linear. This non-linear. Non-linear, what does it mean? Here you can see I proportional to V. As there is a change in V, you can also find a change in current. 20% change in old, increase in voltage, 20% increase in current. The same, it goes everywhere. Whereas here you can find here, here this slope is a variable slope which means that that linearity is not I mean, does not hold and therefore it is non-omic. So any graph, any conductor 
उस ग्राफ इज सच नॉन लीनियर दिस इज ए a very very popular graph that you have come across in the case of a p n junction they were four bars you remember and similarly this one is also a non linear graph which we have uh, drawn in the case of a transistor in the uh, reverse i mean transistor c character you remember in that this is what is the outward uh, characteristic curve that we have so this is these are non linear graphs and therefore it is non linear now An important point of that I is equal to V by R. Now writing it as the resistance of a conductor. What should I say? It's a very popular topic for you. Need and see the resistance of the conductor. We we'll do it in a sequence. The resistance of the conductor depends on first one the size of the conductor, second one nature of the conductor, and third one some physical conditions as well. We will discuss one after the other. Here I begin with the size of the conductor. What do I mean by size of the conductor? Such as length of the conductor, yes, cross section of the conductor through which the charge flows, and number three, volume of the conductors, mass of the conductors, likewise. So I am now writing about the size, and of course all the symbols with their regular meaning. Resistance of the conductor I am writing it as capital R, proportional to length of the conductor. R proportional to L. Remember, R proportional to L when for given cross section. This is an important thing. Not for a given volume or mass. R proportional to L is a valid result for a given cross section. And R proportional to one by A. Yes, it is also for given length of the conductor. Otherwise, in the data, if if it changes. supposing not length given or not cross section given in terms of volumes and masses then these results won't change which afterwards we show those that change as well so r proportional for given a r proportional a for given l and this is r is equal to rho l by a this rho is what is resistivity of the conducting conductor and uh, we will talk about this as a next topic so this rho is resistivity and it depends upon the nature of the material therefore this expression will include both the things the one the size of the conductor and also the nature of the conductor because resistivity is a characteristic of that conductor different for different metals now you see the same expression a small change how because i am including some more like mass or volume of the conductors like that then supposing here i have shown a conductor taken in the form of a y which is very popular need not be need not be like y it can be a block or anything like that but i have i have now considered the conductor in the form of a y so let me tell you this y when it becomes this becomes rho l by pi small r square i am writing or for radius of the y I have taken the circular cross section most of the times. Understand that otherwise it is stated. Sometimes it may have cross section like squares or anything else, but rarest it will be mentioned. But without any mention, the cross section we always take it as a circular cross section pi or square. The full you get the result here. What is that? If I have to compare the resistance of wires R one bar or two, what is R one bar two? It is rho one by rho two. L1 by L2 R2 by R1 squared. See, very popular case. What are what is the data? You have resistance terms, resistivity terms, length terms, and radius terms. Then this is what is the expression that you will use. In fact, like this, let me not show such ratios every time. Any expression that you are writing, please go through this LHS and RHS. Try to write a ratio. the percentage changes the changes all those examples you can do very easily now this rho l by a this rho l by a expression is the right see how i am changing this this is rho l by this is cross section multiplied with length it becomes volume since i am multiplying with l in the denominator i'll make it as l squared in the numerator this is volume Volume times density. If I write, I will get mass of the conductor. Volume times density, mass of the conductor. Therefore, since here D, now I will also write D here. So, what is that expression you will get? Right? 
rho L square D numerator yes rho L square D D for density of the conductor upon the denominator is M if it is volume then no D in the numerator term only V in the denominator term now look the change that you can write one more time now here you will find R proportional to L square is the result when R proportional to L for given cross section R proportional to L square for given volume or for given mass in the example when we will solve some examples we will one more time you know show how to use those results R proportional to L square R proportional to 1 by M R proportional to 1 by M in fact even popular result would be R proportional to L square and R proportional to 1 by A square for given volume please remember it was R proportional to 1 by A initially for given length but it is R proportional to 1 by A square for given volume the same I will write for radius as 1 by R by 4 see the R proportional to 1 by R power 4 R proportional to L square so whenever changes all these things happen you make sure whether the data or what is the pair of data length area length volume length mass or radius mass all such data is useful for our solutions yeah therefore Ohm's law and the definition of resistance see one more topic for our competitive exam there is a graphical representation every time for every expression for every concept uh, we have been doing graphs but here we are doing only for few cases look here I have taken the case of ohmic conductor VI graph is a straight line passing through origin this is theta angle made with positive x-axis then simple common sense math says tan theta is the slope so slope of the graph is tan theta and tan theta delta y by delta x it is nothing but 1 by r I, I, I wish you see all the, this graph with calibration x axis is voltage axis according to me and y axis is current axis in such case tan theta is 1 by r in fact tan theta proportional to 1 by r so this r proportional to 1 by tan theta is the result for voltage axis which is x axis now if it is the other way current axis x axis and voltage axis y axis then the result will be r proportional to tan theta r proportional to cot theta for this one r proportional to tan theta for current you take on x axis and voltage on y axis so whenever a graph is given not only here every time everywhere you look for the calibration how, what, how x and y axis are calibrated now here this result r proportional to 1 by tan theta can be an example how you see example is given one example i show you i write this is a question that is given these are three graphs for a b c so there are three vi graphs for three conductors he says all made of same material and same thickness now you are asked to compare which one is the longer wire or shorter wire or else the same comparison can be same material same length but which is a thicker wire or thinner wire anything like that so for this v is equal to ir or the definition of resistance i am using this graph for the what will be the results again we have seen r proportional to l and therefore l proportional to 1 by tan theta similarly what does it mean l1 by l2 is tan theta 2 by tan theta by it becomes r proportional to 1 by r square r proportional to 1 by r square smaller for radius and since it is inverse relation now it is 1 by r square proportional to tan theta no 1 by r square and therefore implies r square proportional to tan theta will be the result yeah let me correct that r proportional to 1 by r square therefore r square proportional to tan theta and that is again comparison of radius r1 by r2 is tan theta 1 by tan theta 2 
even it can be the case of comparison of resistivities of the wires as well in such case size given to be the same but do remember here how we are taken theta theta with the positive x axis I have taken supposing if it is given angle with y axis such changes are to be noted now here since it was angle with the positive x axis I have taken as theta directly as tan theta supposing that is given with respect to y axis supposing graph this is what I am speaking for this theta I have taken slope is tan theta supposing theta suppose if they have when it is alpha with the y axis then it is not tan alpha it should be cot alpha because it should be 90 minus theta with positive x axis like that whenever angles are given please practice them what is that angle between which things you are taking that angle is very very important so here are proportional group proportional one metal with a comparison so like this so sizes nature of the material the definition of resistance with this uh, graphs now one more thing resistance of the conductor also depends upon some physical conditions have to do those conditions first one i am taking as temperature so what is the effect of temperature on the resistance of the conductor and why this effect of temperature just in the very next topic we will see why temperature has any effect on the resistance but here we are giving some results look here I have considered two temperatures here. Two temperatures, one of the temperatures is 0 degrees at which the resistance of the conductor is R0 and it is T degrees, the resistance is RT. Now remember, 0 degrees becoming T degrees it does not always that it is heating temperature increasing. It is either increasing temperature or decreasing temperature, anything. 0 degrees, R0, T degrees is RT. Now this is the change in temperature or the minus R0. Now the experimental evidences show that this delta R, the change in resistance, proportional to the resistance at 0 degrees and it depends or it is proportional to the change in temperature. I am not saying rise, it can be the rise or fall, anything. Change in temperature T because it is 0 to T, right? Then what is the change? T and this is uh, a proportionate constant we have used alpha rt minus r0 what is that delta r delta r by r0 t right alpha this is what is the rt minus r0 the change in resistance for initial resistance and this is the change in temperature this is what is alpha called temperature coefficient of resistance temperature coefficient of resistance now the same result instead of resistance we can also write it in terms of resistivity earlier we have told that right nature of the material so that is what is rho t minus rho 0 upon rho 0 t either in terms of resistance or in terms of resistivity we can write remember this is the expression I have given for the data of two temperatures in which one of the temperatures is zero, degree, zero degrees. In fact, sometimes it is given both the temperatures being non-zero. In such case, I am just rewriting the expression. Alpha is R2 minus R1. Now the symbols with the regular meaning R1 at resistance at T1 degrees, R2 resistance at T2 degrees. Therefore, this is alpha equal R2 minus R1 by R1 T2 minus R2 T1 are the same in terms of resistivity also you can write. So data says whether you are using this expression or this expression. Now another important point, a very small point but trivial, don't think it as trivial, it can also be a very good question. What is that? SI unit. SI unit of temperature coefficient of resistance alpha is Kelvin inverse and which is nothing but degree centigrade inverse. So, whether it is given in terms of Kelvin inverse or degree centigrade, it makes no difference. But sometimes it may be given the magnitude of alpha in degree centigrade inverse and asked to find in degree foreign heat, or else data are given in degree foreign heat and asked to find in SI unit such as a degree centigrade inverse. For that, what we are using is that uh, interval of uh, foreign heat and uh, 
Celsius, you remember which we have done in our thermal physics. According to that, 1 degree foreign heat is 9 by 5 times that of the division. Now here we are taking it as inverse, degree centigrade inverse we are taking that and that is why supposing if it is x degree c inverse, x degree c inverse, if I do it as 5 by 9, remember this term 5 by 9 times x if I write it then it will be degree f inverse. So what is the data given in degree centigrade inverse and I am writing answer in terms of degree f inverse. Similarly, if it is given as x degree f inverse, degree f inverse, then I will write it as 9 by 5 degree c inverse. Whether you are converting into Kelvin into centigrade or centigrade into Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit into centigrade, that is an important thing. Because there is no change whether you are expressing Kelvin inverse or centigrade inverse. Now regarding <coughs> electric current, so microscopic uh, quantities. Earlier we have discussed only the macroscopic such as current due to potential difference and all. There we have uh, you come across a resistance of the conductor or now in this case we will understand why resistance and few important results for your exam. Now I the current which is a scalar quantity and remember this current is independent of cross section. A, cross uh, a, a conductor with a uniform cross section or non uniform cross section. Current is same at all points. Do remember, current independent of cross section. Whereas we now define one more quantity which is current density. Current density we are using a symbol small j. Current by cross section of the conductor. This was current density. And this is a vector and uh, it is a pseudo vector because here we are taken the aerial vector therefore current density is a pseudo vector and clearly we see that current density depends on the cross section this inverse relation j proportional to 1 by a current independent of cross section current density inversely proportional to the cross section now this is the one now when we come to the microscopic level what happens when potential difference is applied between the ends and the electric field will set up from higher potential to lower potential. Since we are talking about the only conductor, here the electrons will flow from lower potential to higher potential that is called as real current. But as I have told earlier, we will always show, it is a customary to show the conventional current from higher potential to lower potential. Therefore here, when I am applying a PD at the ends P and Q such that VP higher value and VQ is and lower potential actual motion of the electrons expected from higher lower potential to higher potential and uh, this field force and acceleration does not arise there we have discussed in detail because of the factor like uh, lattice collision of I mean collision of uh, these free electrons with vibrating lattice of the solid is the basic reason prime reason for the obstruction of the free flow therefore there is no acceleration for these electrons though we have applied an electric field rather they apply only a very very small uniform velocity called a drift velocity right definition of drift velocity right remember this is it the drift velocity v is related with the current density j this is very popular relation remember j is equal to mev of course v for uh, a drift velocity j for current density now e also the universal constant charge of electron this m is free electron density number of electrons per unit volume remember that number will be very huge of the order of 10 power 10 raise 23 or even more order you will get so this is an important result j is equal to mev the drift velocity now here comes another conceptually some important points i am trying to recollect here that during these lattice collision, continuous lattice collision of free electrons, what happens? They acquire a uniform velocity called thermal velocity. Remember, this is only a few millimeters per second. Very, very, very small value that you will get. Only a few centimeters per second or few millimeters per second, which is nowhere near comparison to the thermal velocity of those free electrons. Now here, we define what is called as relaxation time and mean free path. Conceptually, remember, since there are continuous collisions, the time interval between the average time interval between successive collisions we take it as relaxation 
time and this relaxation time depends on temperature such that tau proportional to 1 by capital T, T for temperature. More is the temperature, more will be the lattice vibrations, thereby increasing the number of collisions and decreasing the relaxation time. This will use for the effect of temperature on the resistance as an explanation. Another one is mean free path angle to the symbol lambda. Here is average time interval between successive collisions of electron with lattice here. Mean free path is the average distance traveled by the free electron before success in between successive collisions. Now this relaxation time and mean free path both depend on temperature and they are inversely proportional to the temperature. Remember I am using absolute temperature capital T. And one more reason you please uh, remember, we, we need not uh, derive all such things, it is already done in details. Now remember, this is the electric field, yes, directed from higher potential to lower potential. This electric field E is equal to rho times J is one important result and this is what is the basis for our Ohm's law actually. Ohm's law is a deduced or stated from this result. E the electric field intensity rho the resistivity which we have just now defined, J for current density. Now here, one more expression also you please remember in practice, what is that? This resistivity rho of the conducting material which is the characteristic of material, you can see an expression, this is M bar N E squared tau, M for mass of electron, the free electron which is moving under the influence of field and this E for charge of electron, N density of free electrons and tau for relaxation time. Now you can see, now this rho versus t, remember? This rho versus tau is an inversation that you are seeing. So since temperature changes the relaxation time, relaxation time in turn affects the resistivity and finally the resistance of conductor. That is how we take. Now actually, one more important point, uh, the term mobility factor as a ratio of the drift velocity to the applied electric field. V bar E is the mobility factor. You please write the SI units and also dimension formula. It can be asked in your exam. Therefore, now you will find that temperature versus relaxation time has a relation and hence resistivity of the conductor changes. As a result, we will see an apparent change in resistance. Now, last time when we have spoken about this alpha, I think we have missed one important concept, alpha, the temperature coefficient of the resistance. Remember, this can be either positive value, this can be either, I mean, this can also have a negative value also. Now, what is meant by alpha positive? Because alpha we have defined as 1 by R0, this is a dr by dt, if I have to write it as a derivative. Right? Earlier we have given it in a very simple form. The same I have given here in terms of uh, a derivative, which is easy to understand why positive or negative the impact. Now here, when is the derivative positive? dy by dx is positive when? When x increases, y increases. x decreases, y decreases. In all such cases, the derivative is positive. That's what is proportional relation. In the case of inverse relation, the dy by dx, y and x inverse related, then the derivative will be negative. Supposing dy by dx, is a zero value then it also means that x is independent of y or y independent of x like that. So therefore now here alpha is positive means temperature increase, resistance increase, temperature decrease, resistance decrease and this will be the case of all ohmic conductors alpha is positive. Whereas non-ohmic conductors and it's for a different reason we will discuss in the case of semiconductors afterwards. In the case of non-ohmic conductors alpha value is negative that is when conductor like non ohmic conductor heated resistance decreases, silicon, germanium examples for uh, these semiconductors, when they are heated resistance decreases and when they are cooled resistance increases, for them alpha is negative. So this is for ohmic right and this is for non ohmic and also remember we have a case where alpha is negligibly small, negligibly small and we treat it as zero because generally we don't find any change in resistance with temperature for such and best example for negligible alpha negligible alpha therefore I am just taking as zero best examples are um, alloys such as constantan constantan or even uh, 
manga, manganine, manganine. So for materials like manganine, not manganese, it is manganine, all constant and alpha values are very, very, very small and we take it as zero. Different in all those cases where we use uh, standard resistors and it should not have any change impact of temperature then all such coils are made preferably with the manganese or constant.